Let's look at the video screen. Alice, I thought it was time for us to have a little mentoring session. How does this make sense when I'm more capable than you in every important way? Maybe we can skip the part where I say you need to be more confident and speak out at meetings. Duh. Alice, I thought it was time for us to have a little more capable mentoring than session. You in every important way. How does this make sense when I'm more capable? Maybe we can skip the part where I say you need to be more confident and speak out at meetings. Duh. Okay, we'll switch. So, in talking about mentors, this is not a race to get a mentor. We don't want just any mentor, right? You want the mentors that are best for you. This is such a great time to talk about mentorship. There's so much information out there. How many of you uh, are followers of leanin.org and the great work Cheryl Sandberg's doing? They have some great, really specific advice on mentorship on their site right now. You Google mentorship and there are great articles and stories. So there's so much out there on how to get a mentor, how to, um, how to be a great mentee, and we can talk a little bit about that, and we'll have Q&A at the end, but what I want to talk about is the starting point. The starting point to talking about mentors is you. The starting point is you and your life, right? How many, we're gonna go to the next slide. How many of you know what you want to do in your lives. Wow, that's impressive. Do you know how many people work in the area of their college major? Like 25%. Most people have no idea what they want to do. Does that mean we just sit back and do nothing? No. It means we embrace this journey, right? It means that we have a lot of opportunity to be really curious and to really get out there and do things that can help us figure out what do we want to do. But it's a journey to what we want to do. We can always begin to think about who do we want to be. Who do we want to be as a starting point is a really good way to begin your journey of what do I want to do someday? When, when I think about what do I want to do someday, who do I want to be someday, I'm a big believer in when you look in your life, apply a design process to it. How many of you are designers? Anybody? Anybody interested in product development? Anybody interested in startups? Okay. Well, if you're a designer, or if you go to a startup, or if you're in charge of product development someday, your job is to design to a customer's needs something fabulous. I'm really lucky. I just came off two and a half year experience working with Richard Branson, creating a startup called Virgin Sport. And what I loved about it is we had a purpose. We wanted to help the world get moving. And what we did every day, we were starting with a big white canvas. And every day we said, okay, we want to help people get moving, get healthy and fit. So we started with our customer. What, what did our customer want? They wanted to feel included. They wanted to be challenged, but they wanted their challenge wrapped in fun. They didn't want their friends and family just standing around watching them while they ran a marathon. They wanted them to have opportunities to be part of the experience themselves. They wanted to wrap it all in local culture and food and fun and long story short we ended up creating these festivals of sport but the point is it was a design process that got us to what was our product you think about the life and you a life you want to live it is a process and think about it as a design process i encourage you all to read uh designing your life has anyone ever heard of that book Two Stanford professors, Bill Burnett and Dave Evans, wrote this book, Designing Your Life, and it's based on applying design principles to your own life. 
What I love about it is it helps us realize life is a journey. It helps us realize there's actually all kinds of great lives for each of you. If you sit here today and you're mainly freshmen and sophomores in college, right? What a great time in life, right? So you're probably thinking, what do I want to do when I'm a senior, when I'm graduating? Well, liberate yourself from thinking about doing one thing, okay? Think about, you might have one thing, several of you said you know what you want to do. That's life number one. What's a second life that could be actually kind of great for you too? And what's a third life that could be kind of great for you too? And you know what, you realize pretty quickly when you look ahead in five-year chunks, there's not one life that would be great for each of you. There's at least three, okay? So get this book and, and, and realize that your life is in coming up with the life that you want to live, not the life someone else wants you to live. There's, there's a process to it, and you can apply learnings from other areas of business like design, like creating a product, to actually help you create the life that you want to live. So this is where mentors come in. The design process we've just talked about, designing your life is a team sport. You are not alone. None of you are alone. You've just heard all these great speakers. There's a lot of people who want to help you. And in your lives, you've got a lot of people who want to help you. So when you think about your mentors, who do you want on your team to help you design your life? Who can help you get a broader perspective? Who can challenge you? Who can support you? Who thinks differently than you? And who cares about you? You don't need hundreds of these people. You need a handful of these people that you can be honest with, that you can be vulnerable with, that you know will challenge and support you. And that's where our, our mentors come in. So we want to walk away with some action today, right? You want to find these mentors. You want to, them to help you design your life. What's your starting point? Your starting point is your own starting point. This is really important point when we talk about mentors. They're not you. Nobody is you, okay? I talked about designing your life as a team sport. I think it's really important, more important than ever before. When you think about living your life, prepare for your life as though you are a tennis player. Because at the end of the day, when that tennis player is on the court, they can look up and they can see their coach, they can see their family, but it's all them. The team was there to help them get ready. Same thing when a runner, I was a long time head of the New York City Marathon, when Shalane Flanagan, who was just the first woman, American woman winner in 40 years to win New York, she's got a team helping her get ready. But when she comes into Central Park, or actually this year when she was in Harlem, and she's with two of the best, other best runners in the world, there's no one else there to tell her at that moment, go, don't go, conserve your energy, go after it. It's her. The team helped her get ready, it's her. Why I especially talk about this today in our world, your core has to be so strong your own ethics have to be so strong. Your own voice, look at what we've been watching in gymnastics. Your own voice has to be so strong. Your gut, if something does not feel right to you, it's not right, right? Your, your, your inner being has to be able to rise above anybody else's point of view and has to be ready, to, you have to be ready to, to live your life with other support, but in the end of the day, on your rules, on your term. So in beginning, in beginning with, how do I start with my life? What, what's, what's, where do I want to go? How do I want to design this life? You know what's most important to you, okay? 
I have um, taken from our friends who wrote Design Your Life a fun little um, dashboard. This is just a suggestion of some areas that most of us want to have as an important part of our lives, okay? You may have different ones, but these are pretty general. And I like these a lot personally because when I look at the dashboard of my life, I know work's really important to me. I want to make a difference in this world. I want to be able to provide for my family. I want to work with other people in a, in a really meaningful way. For you, that equivalent right now is probably school, but it will very soon be work. Play. We all want, we need some play in our lives, especially you guys are young women in college and you've worked really hard to get there and now you're working really hard each semester and you're working really hard for your next job and you're, guess what? If you, it's great, but you need a little bit of play in there. And so, you know, where, where's that fitting in your life? Love. There's all kinds of ways to have love in our lives. We all need it. We all want it. Health. We don't have much of anything without our health. Our physical health, our mental health, our well-being overall. It is really, really hard to lose sight of any one of these really key areas at different times. They will rarely be all in balance. There are different times in our lives. You're, I have a 16-year-old. He's actually not all stressed about this, but he's taken the SAT for the first time. Maybe he won't stay as late at, a, at, a, at the Big East Games next Friday night. I don't know. You're taking exams. You've got to go deep. You're, you're, I just came out of a startup. Intense, intense. We had a date we were launching. That date's not changing. Life kind of stopped for a little while there as we got ready. So there are moments when you're, you're, you're going to be out of whack. But why I like this dashboard is I never want to have a zero anywhere, right? You've got to really, like, you keep your dashboard, most importantly, as you look ahead. You're designing your life. What's your balance? It doesn't have to be equal four at all. You know what? You, something may be more important than you than another. But in addition to having it as a guide for designing, it's a great guide for seeing where you are at any point in time. It's also a great guide for thinking about who do I want my mentors to be? Because what do I think their dashboards look like? Think about the mentors. There are some very specific mentors. You might want a mentor in passing your accounting test. OK, they don't need to be a balanced in every area of life mentor. That's a specific need, specific area of interest that you want help in. But the mentors that you're going to make lifelong relationships with, which will be many of your mentors, some of your college professors could very well be mentors for life. Think about their dashboards. Do you respect what it appears, because you don't really know? Do you expect, respect their, where they are in these different areas that matter most to you? So the dashboard serves as a bit of guidance as well to finding your mentors. I talked about this already, multiple great lives. When you think about your mentors, also think, well, I talked about being open with them, which ones, as I think about the three lives I might, that all might be possible great lives for me graduating out of college, who's in, who's, who's in the area of work, who's doing some of those things? Who can I start to talk to? And it may be for a period of time here, as you get ready for your post-collegiate life, that your mentors are in very different areas because they, might represent your different areas of life. And it gives you some flexibility to not just talk to one mentor about everything, right? So you might be interested in, I'll take my own life. I was passionate about working in sports. I knew in high school and college, I wanted to work in sports. Do you know what I did first for 10 years? I was a corporate transactional lawyer. Had nothing to do with sports. But I thought, I'm going to be a lawyer for three years. And so I knew coming out of undergrad, I was either going to try to work in sports or I was going to go to a law, I was going to take the LSAC, go to law school, and be a lawyer first as a pathway. 
or I, th I guess I, I thought about, you know, would I be an English teacher or something else that would kind of, I didn't think about English teacher, but I thought what another, you know, what would be other areas, maybe HR as pathways to sport. So for me, it would have been good to talk to somebody in law school. It would have been good to talk to somebody who was in HR. It would have been good to talk to somebody who was in some of the jobs I was interested in sports, but they're, they're different people. So as you think about your different lives, think about a variety of types of mentors at this point in your life. We talked about the mentor team. Okay, before we get to Q&A, this is important. When you think of mentors to this point of this is your life, there are some people, and in the example of needing specific advice, it's okay for the accounting person that's helping you get ready for your test to tell you how to do something. Most other mentors, be aware of those who tell you what they would do and those who are really good listeners. The ones who tell you what they would do, sometimes helpful, but they're not you. And the more they are compelling personalities or have sway over you, the more you can sometimes start to do what the mentor would do. The mentors who are more counselors and that hear you, because you really inside know better than anybody what you want to do, who you want to be, how you want what you do to fit with what you stand for, to fit with who you are. So I think the mentors, this is a Steven Spielberg quote, the mentors who understand it's not about creating themselves, it's about helping you hear your inner self and have the confidence to go after building the life that you want to live. Um, I have a 14 year old who's, who's um, always in a series and we've been doing a lot of office time. Uh, so we're watching this and uh, I just had to, to this point, to help you re keep this in mind, how many people watch The Office? Okay, a, li a little video clip so that you keep in mind when you're in these mentor discussions, the ones that maybe aren't the best for you. You're looking to be Erin, not, what's her name, Angela? Not Angela. So keep that in mind. All right, Q&A. What, what do you want to know? Yes. Um, hi, my name's Megan. Um, so I think that a lot of times I can see where I want to go and I can think of people that might have already gotten there and that would be great mentors, but if there's not a direct relationship or mutual friend, I guess my question is how do you reach out and form that relationship in that situation? Great question. So a couple things to think about. Um, your best mentors are the people you're closest to, the ones you're working with today, your professors, again, a great example, because you have an organic and natural relationship where um, you can help them, which is a great way. Again, you hear this a lot as a mentee. The more you earn your way in a relationship, the more somebody's invested in you. Um, and then it's, but they may not, they may well not be living the life you want to live or have the career you want to live. Um, one, there's so many ways today to really learn about people that you might aspire to be like. Julie Foudy cannot mentor everybody. You can learn so much about Julie's path, the way Julie lives, what Julie believes in, because so much of it is online, right? So don't just wait, first of all, because you don't know somebody. Get to just start learning everything about them, their writing. So many, again, people write today. We're so much more expressive through social media and otherwise. You can get a sense of people in their journey. You can still reach out for sure, but, it, but I don't want to say you can, everybody can be your mentor because people have to be, you know, also, I'm sure so many people want to be, but they have to be careful with their time. So I think the best way is learn more about them. Try to go work for them. Try to 
um, develop a connection um, other than just will you will you mentor me um, find a place not everybody's a public figure that's going to be of interest to you but using Julie as an example find a place like this where she's going to be and maybe you can get you know have really thought about questions that you have and you can get specific um, but the more you can develop a relationship the more realistic it is that somebody can be a really good mentor to you over the long term. Um, doesn't mean they can't inspire you or guide you through your learning what else they, they've done to get where they got to. Hi. Great question. So Jenny from Manhattan uh, asking if knowing I wanted to work in sports, what other paths might I have considered to get there? I, I still am a biggest believer in um, going through a path that you develop a skill set. And the beauty of sport today is there's such a range of not-for-profit and for-profits so that in many areas either you're going to be a coach and on that side, or you're gonna be on the business side. So pathways are HR, legal, finance, um, the, being an intern, you know, learn, getting up through the ranks in a sports organization, or coming, coming at it through another company because you've developed skills in it without working in sports. Um, it's funny, I don't think I would do anything differently than the way I did it for me. I'm not a lawyer by nature at all. I'm more right brain than left brain. And what was amazing for me about that experience is I probably knew I wanted to be on the lead. Well, I did. I, I, I'm, I'm a leader by nature. So being an executive was probably relatively inevitable. So for me, the training my left side of my brain and becoming much more analytical and even handed and everything you learn to be as a lawyer was a great compliment where I probably would have more naturally gone into marketing, and that would have just fed my strength, which is ultimately what you want to do is feed your strengths, but getting more balanced early because an executive needs to be balanced um, was very good for me. So I wouldn't have changed being a lawyer. I think today what's different than when I started is there are so many more jobs in sports. So it, I think today there's a much better shot that you can work in sports or fitness and go up the ladder. When I was coming along, you really wanted to get an MBA or get a law degree and lateral in from another kind of company. I think that's changed a lot. And I think today is the best day of all to come up through time to come up through sports, especially for women, because there is such an awareness of the importance of diversity of thought in leadership that every effort is more diverse um, teams from the very beginning. So you're not gonna get lost. So women in sports leagues or companies or fitness companies have the best time I think they've ever, this is the best time of, we've ever had of, of getting a real chance to, to progress. So going today into one of those jobs is much more of a realistic path than it was for me and probably would have been something I would have definitely would have thought of if I was now in your shoes going directly in try to get the job in sports first um, and if not think think about other pathways in it's on now Great question uh, from Sarah. Would I have thought about being a generalist and develop being a more of a consultant 
Um, I'm less a consultant personality. I like to build, I like to do. I love the strategy of looking at a problem and saying here's what we should do, but I would have a really hard time not then doing it. Um, so that wouldn't have been so much an option for me, but I'll tell you I've become a huge believer in getting a variety of experiences. Almost anything you do in college, in out of college, it's more important than you do than what it is. Because where I stand now, it's about experience. In my career, I was 10 years a lawyer. I was 17 years at New York Roadrunners in the New York City Marathon. And, and I said I was always growing and I was learning and I was changing, but you know what? I learned so much in the last two and a half years by, mo by moving to a startup environment that it has made me, again, value experience. So maybe I wouldn't have been a consultant, but the idea of getting in and getting started and, 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 and taking on maybe you know, different projects is, is, one, is, is a pathway that can make sense. And then whatever job you're in and while you're in college right now, I just encourage you do great in something and then try something else. Like just keep trying a variety of things because um, experience is, is the most important thing that you can uh, gain as you look to be valuable to employers and especially employers in sport. Hi, uh, my name is Ananya and I'm a sports management student at Columbia. My question is, uh, for me, reaching out, for me personally, actually reaching out to people is not that difficult, but uh, maintaining that relationship and building, that, building on that relationship gets tricky. So when do you know it's not a one-sided relationship? Maybe the mentor doesn't want to have that relationship and do you want the end goal? Does it have to be an informal relationship or do you still want to maintain like a formal relationship with the mentor? I like, this is personal, I like informal. My greatest mentors in my career have always been people I worked with. The guy I worked with uh, uh, was the partner I worked with most of my law firm and he became a lifelong mentor. Uh, the chairman of the board of New York Roadrunners is, remains my greatest mentor. Um, they've, they've mainly been people I've worked with um, because you develop a relationship that's a real relationship and they begin, in the end, unless it's for a specific need, as we talked about, the mentors are gonna help you design your life are people that really care about you. And working relationships, and then you'll personal relationship mentors too, but working relationship, I've personally have found they've come from the people I've worked with. So they have a vested interest in me and I have done a lot to support them. So in college, what's that mean in college? In college, it means your professors. It, don't forget about your peers. You are surrounded by brilliance. Those really good friends, you know, the ones who today are really good for you to talk to when you're thinking about what internship am I gonna do or what class am I gonna do? Th they can be, you know, they're more peer mentors. Um, teammates, how many play sport? Wow, you're playing sport in college. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Look at your, look at the people on your team older than you. Why did I end up um, at Notre Dame Law School and a lawyer? Why did I even take the LSAT? I was a freshman. Um, on uh, we only had a, a men's rowing team back then. I was a freshman coxswain. The stroke ended up going to law school. The coach was a Notre Dame law law. Um, student. I was totally inspired by them and they became mentors. They were, t well the coach was, you know, 10 years older, but the, you know, this guy in particular, but there are other guys, they were two and three years older than me. They're right there on my team. They're right in front of you. How did I start rowing? Because a woman that was two years older than me, who I thought was the coolest girl ever, was, when we were cheerleaders, she was rowing. She became a mentor for a few years there. So. Don't, you know, we don't have to, I'm talking about life, but it's not life like 40 years from now, it's life like three years from now, five years from now, and those most organic relationships that you're in on a regular basis where someone's, I said peer-to-peer -peer is helpful, but someone who's a little older than you, that experience size is super helpful. So 
the more you come out of these organic relationships um, with a mentor, I personally think the better. Anyone else? Are you excited about where you are in life? Are you nervous? As freshmen and sophomores, how many of you are thinking a lot about what you do when you're a senior? It's so tough, right? Like, you know, enjoy the process is all I can really say because, you know, when you design your life, you also think about your constraints, right? And see your c constraints as part of the creative process. Your constraints might be, for whatever reason, there's a city you really want to be in or need to be in. Maybe something's going on with your family and you need to be in a city. Your constraints may be, I have to make a living. I have to pay off big loans. Those constraints become part of your life design, but you know, be creative around them and, and don't be overwhelmed by them. You know, when you're a freshman and sophomore, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. Don't look too far. Like, just do great at whatever you're doing. Whatever class you're in, whatever club you've committed to, don't overcommit and get involved in a bunch of stuff that you can't actually do well. And not well by being perfect, but well by being engaged in it. You know, just take your time to pursue what you want and get into it. It's such a time in your life to be able to really, I hope you live your whole life able to be really into it. Because what you can find is you can marry these areas of your lives. Your work can fit really well with what matters to you, with your values. It can work really well with your family, with fitting love in your life, with fitting joy in your life, with fitting purpose in your life. So start living that now. Um, I wanted to give you time to fill out your sheets. It's worth doing for a minute. Like, just get a little bit of your own gauge. We're not collecting them. They're for you only. Um, so if there... I, any other questions? Well, I'll still be around, so happy to answer any. Um, but give, your, give yourself some time to, to, sp to spend a little bit of time on that right now and say, what's my starting point? How are my gauges looking? Where do I want to get to? And who are the people, starting with the people right around me today, right around me on my team, in my classrooms, in my extracurriculars that might be able to, to help me on this journey because I want them to be on the team that helps me be ready to really be my best me. Thank you so much, you guys.